Okay, so we'll just begin chapter four today. Finish it up. I hope we can even finish it next time. It's a pretty short chapter, it really is. States A, B, and C are cooperating to build a dam. Seats on the 12-member water authority are signed, blah, blah, blah. Okay, what this chapter is about? Portionment. So, so every exam has two chapters. So this next exam will be chapters three and four. And, and they're very similar. Three and four have been all about how you break things up, right? Chapters one and two were all about voting and doing that fairly. Chapters three and four are all about breaking things up fairly. Uh, chapter three was dividing. Chapter four is apportionment. Now, what do we mean by apportionment? Well, we mean representation. All kinds of things that we do in the real world, we do that with representative government or representative group of people, right? So, for example, um, you guys know you guys know how this the electoral college thing works in the United States, right? California. How many do we have? I never can remember. Fifty-six or. I'm just guessing. I don't, anybody remember? Whatever. 55, 56, something like that. Is it 55? You know? 55? Okay. 55. So say California has 55 representatives, right? And then some others said Texas has a lot, not quite as many as us. I don't know. And New York has a lot. But we're the most, right? We're the most. Now, why? Why do we get more than... And those people go on and become... Uh, well, it's part of how we elect the president. They also... That means how many representatives we get in the House of Reps, right? 435 people in the House of Reps. Congress, right? Well, Congress includes the House of Representatives. Uh, represent, I can't talk and spell. Representatives. There we go. Anyway, this includes the Senate as well. So 435 members of the House of Representatives. That comes from the various states. Like California, we have 55 Congress people that represent California's interests in Washington, D.C., right? In the House of Representatives. They, they, Try to get things done that benefit California with, you know, the government money, basically, right? That's what they do. They represent us. So whatever is valuable to California, these 55 people try to make sure that our interests are taken care of. We elect them and we send them to Washington, D.C. for whatever it is, four years, six years, I don't remember. And they serve our interests. Now, we also have senators. And how does the senator system work? Do we have more senators than other states? What's that? It's the same for everybody. It's the same for everybody. It's just two per state, huh? The Senate system is just two per state. So all 50 states have two senators. So senators are more rare, right? We have two senators for the whole state of California. Is it, you know, honestly, I don't, it's been Boxer and Feinstein forever. Is it still? Boxer and somebody. Anyway, I don't even know. I'm obviously not well informed. But um, anyway, senators? two. What? The senators? Yeah, is it Boxer and Feinstein or is it Boxer and somebody else? Caroline Harris? Or what's her name again? She just. Did she just come through town? I know her last name is Harris. Is one of them Boxer still? But is Boxer no, Feinstein like forever? Feinstein and another one. Oh, so now it's not Boxer. It's Feinstein and another one. All right, anyway, whatever it is. Every state gets two senators. Now, that's a different system. Well, so that's 100 senators. That's the Senate system. But the House of Reps depends on the state. Now, why do we get more House of Representative people than other states? Why do we get the most? Because we're just California. No, it's because we have more people. It's because we have more people, huh? It's by population. So we've grown over the years as people head west. So, and, and that seems fair, doesn't it? There should, you know, if you've got more people, you should get more representation. It makes sense because we have more people. We're contributing more money towards you know, the nation and on and on you go. So we should have more representation. That seems fair. So that's exactly what the House of Representatives system is. That's how the Electoral College thing, when they vote president, that's why California, whatever, whatever we decide to vote for a president, that candidate gets all 55 of our electoral votes because we as a state, you know, we're bigger than any other state, so our population should weigh in heavier than any other state. We have more people. And that's, that's exactly right. That's, that's called apportionment. That's exactly what we're talking about in, in this chapter. We're going to basically say, um, and they're making up an example of uh, building a dam, states A, B, and C. I just saw the Hoover Dam. My wife and I took our anniversary trip uh, right at the end of summer to saw Hoover Dam. So, and that was a big cooperative project. So, if a couple of states get together to build a dam, dams are beneficial to water supply for, you know, a lot of things. So, what if three states all got together and they say, hey, let's, let's pool our money and our resources together and let's build a, a dam that'll benefit all three of our states. Let's do that. Well, the, the trick is, how are you going to do that? I mean, you can't have, like, everybody 
in all three states vote on every small little thing, you know? Should we hire Joe Blow? Let's all vote. Well, how about Mary Jane? Is she a good person? You know, you get you got to hire managers and people that will make all the little decisions for you, right? You can't have everybody vote on every little nook and cranny. So what you do is you hire a council. You elect a council, a group of men and women. They said 12 members. They call it a water authority. That's what they currently do for things like that. A 12-member water authority. That's like a, like a con like Congress people. Same kind of thing. And these 12 people will make all the decisions about how the dam is built, how the water is going to flow. Now realize that states A, B, and C have different interests, right? You know, state A wants most of the water flowing its way. State B, bless you, would want more going its way. State C, right? So, so basically, these 12 people, if they're all from state A, that wouldn't be good. At least it wouldn't be good for states B and C. Because they would make decisions about how the dam is built that really benefit state A, wouldn't they? And they wouldn't really give a hoop whether it benefits states B or C. So part of the deal is when you have like a, a water authority, a group of men and women that represent the interests of a few states, you've got to somehow do it fairly. And what does fairly mean? Well, the more people, the more representation, just like House of Congress, House of Representatives in the Congress, right? So if A has more people, then A should get more of these 12 members coming from its state. Maybe it should get five or six or seven or eight of the 12. B, it's the same thing. The more population you have compared to the other states, the more of the 12 you should be from your state representing your interests. So when these 12 vote on things and make decisions as a group about the dam and how it's built and how the water flows and who it's going to benefit, you know, the people from state A will make decisions benefiting state A. The people from B will benefit B and C will benefit C. So this is a big deal. This is a big deal. I mean, real life, this is a big deal. You know, how these kind of things are decided and elected People get all worked out. It is, it is a big deal in society. So how do we do it, friend? How can math come in and help us do this kind of thing in a way that's as fair as possible? Well, let me give you the facts. So now that's the introduction. How do we actually crank these things out? First off, they're going to have you calculate something called the standard divisor. Let me get my notes so I don't say something and then take it back. But tell you the truth the first time. Okay, so where did I put that? So the standard divisor, oh there it is. Yeah, is the total number of people over the seats. Yeah. So standard, so here I give you the the formula. Standard divisor is total number of people, all three states put together, divided by the number of seats on the whatever, in this case the water authority or the Congress or whatever. Okay, so what's the total number of people we're talking about? There's 53,000 people that live in state A, 14,000 in B, and 25,000 in C. So this will be 53,000 plus 14,000 plus 25,000, whatever that total is, divided by, and what's the total number of seats? That's 12. It's the 12 member. We're trying to have 12 men and women represent the interests of all three states, all those thousands and thousands of people. Okay, so this is where you need a calculator. In fact, go ahead and calculate that. I'm going to grab mine. I should have brought mine with me. So I'll grab mine real quick. I'm just down the hall. Crank them out, see if you're getting the same thing as me. I'm getting um, 7, 666, 
The point, do you want me to round? Oh, the round to the nearest whole number. So I got point like six is the keep going. So that would round seven, six, six, seven. If you round to the nearest whole number, did y'all get that? Did anybody get that or did I hit the wrong buttons yet? Some of you got it? Okay. Yeah, so just total number of people divided. And they said round to the nearest whole number. So, I, you know, you know, 0.5 rounds up, right? So 0.6 rounds up. So 7667. Seven. Let's go back. I'll enter that number. 766 six. question is they're going to ask what is the standard quota? So the standard, standard quota for A. And so how do you do that? It's equal to the number of people in A, in state A, divided by the standard divisor. That's why we um, call the standard divisor the standard divisor. It's what you just keep dividing by. So from now on, we'll just keep dividing by that. So it's the number of people in state A. How many is that? 53,000 live in state A, divided by that 7667 number. So let's do that. I'm getting 6.912. I mean, you could row on how, I don't know how far they want me to, let me, let me see. So 4 to 6.9127 is what I got. Did you guys get that rounded to four decimal places? I mean, if, is that good? Remember, on the test, you can't use a cell phone, right? So make sure you have a calculator other than a cell phone. Definitely on this test, you know, a lot of these big numbers, you, you definitely want a calculator. Okay, so we got, we got that. Now, let's do, let's do the standard quota for B and for C. I'm going to get this out of the way here. And we'll do the standard quota for B and for C. Standard quota for B is the number of people in B over the standard divisor. So that would be 14,000 people live in B. Again, over that same standard divisor, we just keep dividing that. That's why it's called the divisor. We just keep dividing by that divisor. Getting the numbers there. I'll put them up on the screen in just a second. Okay, so I'm getting, oh, I didn't get it yet. Seven, six, six, seven. I'm getting 1.8260. 1. You guys get that okay? And then finally, state C, standard quota for state C. It's the number of people in state C over the standard divisor again. And so how many people in C? 25,000. 25,000 divided by the divisor, 7667. Divided by 7667. I'm getting 3.2607. All right, there we go. Now, what are those numbers? I mean, real life. This, this class is very much real life. So what, what, what are those numbers? Well, that's how many um, representatives they deserve fairly based on their population. So in other words, 12 people are going to represent this water authority, right? They're going to they're represent the dam project. So um, to be fair, state A, because of their, they're the largest population, 53,000 people, they should have 6.9 of the 12 representatives, that'd be fair. State B should have 1.8, that would be fair. State C should have 3.2, that, that would be fair. But here's the problem. How do you have part of a representative? You see the problem, right? 
You can't have 6.9 or 3.2 or 1.8. You either, you either have, the state C is either going to have three of the 12 be there representing state C's interests, or they're going to have four, right? And if they have three, they're going to feel gypped because they deserve more than three. But if they have four, that's, that's not fair either. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do with the decimals? That's what the entire chapter is about. That seems kind of silly on, on one hand. But people are real serious about this, and we'll see throughout history, they get real bent out of shape. Um, groups of people, like if you, um, you know, if you gave State C only three representatives, they're, they're, there's usually a lawsuit at that point. Because they're saying, I'm not being fairly represented. Based on our population of 25 people, we deserve more than three of those 12 people being there representing our interests. If we only have three of the 12 representing our interests and making the flood waters, the dam waters come our way, then, then, then we're not going to be taken care of fairly. That's not fair. People get really upset about all this kind of stuff. So I know it seems silly, like, well, you, you round to three. Yeah, but they're above three. So that's what the whole rest of the chapter is about, is what do we do about these decimals? That's really it. I know that seems silly when you think about it, but that is the whole chapter. What do we do about these decimals? Because this is truly fair, truly fair, truly fair, but you can't give part of a representative, right? There's 12 whole people. You can't give 6.9. You can't tell somebody 90% of the time think about state A and the other 10% of the time think about state B. We can't do it that way. So what do we do? That's what the whole chapter is about. But is that good so far? We're just kind of getting warmed up. We have, let's do 10 more. So let's do a couple more of these, make sure we're comfortable. And then we'll really get into the meat of it next time. It's pretty easy. It's pretty much the same thing. Okay, so there we go. So labor council is being formed for unions. Electricians have 26 members. Plumbers have 11. Painters have 25. Carpenters have 37. Council's going to have 10 representatives. So there's the same kind of thing. You've got a small group of people representing the interests of a lot of people. So of these 10 representatives, how many should be electricians? Should come from the group of electricians? How many should come from the uh, plumbers? How many should come from the painters? How many should come from the carpenters? Well, you know, the more population, the more representation. Right? That's, so, so let's figure it out. So first thing is standard divisor. How do we figure standard divisor? That formula I gave you, which is total number of people over the number of seats in the representative group. So see if you can get that. I've already got the answer there for you, 9.90. What's the total number of people? Where do we go for the total number of people on this one? It's the 26, the 11, the 25, and the 37, huh? That's the people you're representing all these uh, members of the of the union, the four unions. 26, 11, 25, and 37 divided by the total number of seats, uh, 10. He's tracking with me. That's the 10 representatives. So whatever that, oh, and I guess that comes out to be 9.90. Rounded to two places. All right, and then they ask for the standard quota. Next Next question asks for all the standard quotas. So let's do the electricians first off. So we're saying, elect, I can't spell while I talk, electricians. So how many, um, how many of those 10 seats should, should be electricians sitting in, the, in, in, in there to represent the interests of the electricians? Remember how you do it. You take the uh, number of people that are electricians divided by the standard divisor. You just keep dividing by the divisor. Once you, so first you find the divisor, and then you just keep using it to divide every group by the divisor. So how many electricians? 26 divided by the divisor, 9.90. What do you get? I'm getting 2.6262. just keeps going forever. Uh, what does it say? Four decimal places? So I got 62626. Six, six. So let me help you. Let me make sure you're good with the rounding. So remember when you want to round something, they're saying four decimal places right there. This section is real picky on that. You got to get the decimals right. So what do you do? You circle the fourth place because you're trying to stop at the fourth place, right? You look one to the right. If the one to the right is five or more, you know the deal, right? You go up, 
Um, otherwise, you just leave it. So we'll go up to seven, won't we? Wait, wait. I went. To, I, I rounded the wrong one. You're supposed to round the one I circled. So up to three. Because with me, right? You just circle the fourth spot. They say go to four places. So one to the right. So I go to three. 2.6263. That's how many of the 10 representatives should fairly be electricians to represent the population of the electricians fairly, to be fair about it. All right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to move on to number three. Is that okay? So the rest would be the same. Plumbers, painters, carpenters do the same thing. We good with that one? I'll move on. What do you do about the decimals? We'll do one of these and we'll stop. So here we have a situation. We have four different states, states A, B, C, and D. There's their population in thousands. Total, nice, we don't have to add them up. They already given us the total. And then they're saying, okay, um, according to the country's constitution, Congress will have 31 seats. So that's the number of representatives, 31 seats. So divide up the 31 Congress people fairly. They're going to have us do Hamilton's method. I'll explain that in a minute. Let's just start with the normal thing. What's the first thing? We've got to get the standard divisor. So let's do that. Standard divisor. What's the standard divisor? Total population divided by number of seats, right? So total population, 930. Just, just leave that. Don't, don't, put, don't put zeros in the back or anything like that. Just, let's just leave it as 930. be easier that way. So 930 divided by the number of seats, 31 seats, right? So that comes out 30 exactly. That's very nice. Got a nice, clean standard divisor. Am I racing ahead of you? You okay so far? So standard divisor is total population over number of seats. 930 right there is the total population for all those states divided by 31 seats on Congress, in the Congress. 30 is my standard divisor. Okay, so what does that mean? That means that I take these different groups. Yeah, I wish I'd made that. Maybe I should have made that bigger now. Anyway, and I, for each one, yeah, I think, now that we got that, can I, can I flash off that and make it a little bigger? Okay, so 30, standard divisor, I'll write SD, standard divisor is 30. That's my divisor. So what I do, well, first off, i got to figure fair. And what's fair going to be? Remember, it's the, it's the number, it's their population divided by the divisor, isn't it? So what does that come out to be? 30, you know, 108, clear that. 108 divided by... By 30. I'm getting 3.6. Mm -hmm. 3.6 for A. This one would be 156 divided by 30. I'm just going to divide them each by 30 and get a fair, a fair share for each state. And then we'll worry about the decimals. 294 divided by 30. 9.8. Oops, it's a 9 there. 9.8. Seventy-two divided by thirty. Twelve point four. There we go. So far, so good for the fair. Y'all see how I'm doing that? That's what that standard divisor does for us. We just divide each state's amount of people by the divisor, and so that tells us the true fair amount that they should get. Each state should get that many representatives on the 31 seats. Out of the 31 seats on Congress, that's how many representatives. A should get 3.6 representatives. That'd be truly fair. And B should get 5.2. And C should get 9.8. D should get 12.4. Of the 31 seats, that would be truly fair. But we can't do part of a representative. Right? So what, what are we going to do? Well... We'll, we'll end with this, and then I'll do the clicker, and we're out of here. Ham they're telling us to do Hamilton's method. Hamilton's method is very simple. It's the simplest of all the methods. What it does, what Hamilton says to do, th this was actually Hamilton from history. This was in American history. Hamilton said, they were trying to divide up when the United States was getting started. So they said, Hamilton said, look, let's just round them all down. 
round down. And, and, and you've got you to gotta realize, when we say round down, we don't mean round off. There's a difference, right? Rounding off means go to the closest. 0.5 goes up, 0.4 goes down. Round down means down. I mean, truly down. Even 0.9, down. So Hamilton says round them all down. 9.8 even goes down to 9. Round them all down. See how many you got and give the extras to the biggest decimals. That makes sense, doesn't it? I like Hamilton. So if you just add these up, what's, what's the total of all these right now? If I just add up 3 plus 5 plus 9 plus 12... So it is 21, yeah, 29, 29 seats. How many more? So that would, you know, that would only be passing out if I only gave state A3 and state B5 and state C9 and state D12. You add all that up, that's 29 seats. How many more spots do we have left to give out? Two. Two more because there's 31 total. So who should get those two extra? Well, the biggest decimals, huh? The biggest, who would the, who, who's got the biggest, the point eight? And the point six, they should get the extra seats. That's what Hamilton said. Just give them the extra seats. So this will be four, five, ten, and twelve. That's all 31 seats. Everybody's happy. Well, not quite. Not everybody's happy. This 12.4 would be like, I almost deserve another seat. Anyway, so we'll get into all that next time. That's Hamilton's method. This isn't due yet. Let me put the clicker up. And we'll, I finally got the clicker program. So we'll just close with a free... Click here. Wait, let me put the little. I'm almost got it in here. Little thing here. Boom. Boom. Okay, so click A for Apple.